those bull chicks are here to slay. Stop what you're doing, plug in and play. Those bull chicks will make your day. So stop what you're doing and say, those bull chicks. Hello, all you bald and balding people, and welcome back to those bull chicks, your favorite alopecia podcast. It's a little bit different. As you know, Kristen left the podcast, so it's just me this time hosting, and I am here with my good friend, Jess Hutchinson. What is cool about this guest is we actually met through a mutual hair loss friend, Rena. Uh, Some of you probably know her, and funny enough, she actually ended up living in Michigan about 20 minutes from me, which was pretty cool. Uh, She has been one of my biggest supporters for my small business as well, which I can't thank her enough for. Um, A little bit about Jess, too, is she's a social worker and a wonderful mom of a 14-year-old. How's those teen years treating you? (laughs) We can talk about that next year when he's in high school, but yeah, it's... It's it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. I remember being a teen. I was something else as a teen. So yes, I put myself in perspective of what was I doing at 14? And then I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Absolutely. So I'll applaud you for that because I know that can be tough. Yeah. 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 She also loves fitness and is a nature junkie, which we love to hear as am I. I love to be outside, but I can't tell you how extremely happy I am to have you here. And I can't wait to hear about your whole hair loss journey and welcome. Thank you. No, I'm very happy to be here. Like I told you, I've never done a podcast before. I listen to yours and I listen to a lot of podcasts on my many nature walks, but I've never been yeah. able to participate. So this is really cool. Thank you. It's like for the first, first time for any everything, you know? Yes. I thank know. You. So that's exciting. So yeah, go ahead and start us off with your hair loss journey to date. Oh boy. Okay. Well, mine's... <laughs> Mine kind of goes back. I know everyone's story is a little bit different, but I'm, I'm 41 in August. And I would like to say that it all kind of started when I was about 13 or 14, not too far from my son's age. I'll kind of give you a, the consolidated version, but I I (laughs) had an eating disorder when I was younger, about 12 and 13. And I think I started to notice it around that time. Just, you know, I, I noticed like there was a texture change um, and I was going to see a doctor and they said, well, you know, your nails are brittle. Your hair might be falling out a little bit because of that. You know, once you start to recover and you start to, you know, things start getting on track, your body's um, back where it should be. You should notice it kind of correcting itself. Well, the nails and the skin and all of that started to correct itself. Unfortunately, the rest of it was untrue. I was a big fan of, you know, putting manic panic and like all those fun colors in my hair. So yeah. it wasn't when it wasn't too severe, I kind of got away with just like throwing some fun colors in and, you know, wearing it up in a bun and all of the things that you do. Oh, yeah. And then the biggest turning point, I vividly remember when I was about maybe 15 or 16, I decided to go full jet black hair. I don't know what I did box that too. hair. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just out of the box. I just decided to go to Rite Aid one day. Biggest regret. Like as soon as I did it, yep. panic set in. My best friend Hans, his mom's a stylist. He was like, why did you, that you will never come out of your hair. <laughs> and as it started to grow out, you know how it kind of does that skunk look. Yep. I assumed again, it was just the color growing out. Okay. My hair is a little on the thin side. It's just the color growing out. Sure. Not a big deal. And that just wasn't the case. From that moment on, it went from, was it the color that made it fall out? Was it, it, and it's so hard to look back because it's been over 20 years, but it just progressively got worse. I I just started cutting my hair a little shorter. Like Dharma and Greg was a show on TV probably way before. (laughs) No, I know what you're talking about, actually. (laughs) Like the the Delia's catalog girls all had like the Natalie and Bruglia hair. Yep. I thought that would be the fix. Of course, as you know, when your hair is not of the same texture of Natalie Abruglia or Dharma or Jenna yeah. Elfman. It won't it look the same. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't look the same, but it I could kind of finagle it and make it look, you know, submission, put it hairspray and, and whatever I'd put into all it. All that teasing, that, all that good stuff that we really. <laughs> the whole look. And there I lived until I honestly discovered the community, which I can kind of get into. Really? but. Yeah, I had that look until my mid 30s when I just decided I kind of had enough. You know, I do the whole 
Googling, like trying to find, before, I didn't know before Instagram, I just would go on these journeys online. You know, I'm sure you've done it where you stay up all night, you're looking yep. and your head is so full of information that you just, you're yeah. actually making it worse. Yep. <laughs> and I think once I discovered the community is kind of flashing forward, it's been about three years and you know, finding other women on Instagram. I think it started with just one account I saw when I looked for hashtags, you know, as I'm yeah. new to Instagram and it just turned into me creating a separate Instagram account and then discovering all the people. Yeah. 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 And it's, and it's really just kind of fresh for me because it took me a really long time. I just, I hid under right. fibers and dry shampoos and weird little twists and things like that with my hair. And so was it during the pandemic that you found? No, I think it was right before the pandemic, actually, to be honest, it might've been a little under a year before the pandemic when I started my secondary account. And yeah. then I started to talk to more and more women and get a little more comfortable. But that's also when I kind of made the discovery that this wasn't the eating disorder. This wasn't yeah. the hair dye. This is, and then again, I, I don't have an official diagnosis. Um, yeah. my family oh, I didn't know a, that. No, I mean, my family has a history genetically. My mother um, experiences hair loss. Her grandmother, oh, my aunt, my mom's sister actually. So it runs in your family. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I do feel like there's a genetic component, but you know, there's also moments where I know that mine's a little different than my mom. I'm, I'm more patchy and sure. rather than diffuse. So Interesting. Isn't that weird though? Because I'm like same time frame as you. Mine was like right in the beginning of the pandemic that I found the community. Like I just did yeah. not, I wasn't searching. I was terrified to search because I'm like, but what if I don't want to find people that are like me? Like what if, I just don't want to accept this. And I remember when I found people, it was weird. It was like, I thought it was my fault that I gave myself alopecia. I wore extensions. I dyed my hair. I did everything under mm -hmm. the sun. And I'm like, I killed my hair follicles. Like I literally, yeah. this is my fault. Yeah. So I lived with that for years. And then when I found everybody, I'm like, wait, so this wasn't me? <laughs> like, oh yeah, th there's more people that just have this and you can't really control it. That's interesting. It kind of gave me like an answer, you know? Yeah. I thought yeah. the same. I thought that box of hair, black hair dye was was it for so long I was like oh no why did yep. I like I just lived in that moment for, but no you're right I I tried to figure out answers and there just there weren't any that self-blame yeah oh god yeah. that'll get you it will man yeah. I feel like I lived in that bubble of just okay so it's my diet it's this it's this mm -hmm. let me change this let me change this and then nothing ever worked so I was like it's definitely me that did this you know what I mean so yeah. Yeah. And even, and when I had my son too, it was the strangest thing. I, I know a lot of women go through their own postpartum shed and, and all that stuff. Sure. I will say the one time I had it kind of fill in where it looked was when I was pregnant. I was like, okay, this is oh weird. It wasn't great. Like it was not somebody's great hair. I wouldn't wear sure. it out with pride, but then I think it, I will say that I had my son at 26 that's when it really hit the worst point. That's when it really, the shedding afterwards, whereas some women, it'll kind of come back in. They go through yeah. the shed. I hear my friends, oh, it came back. I just, I dealt with it for a while. Mine right. just never, never came back. So I had hope for a moment. Oh, how wild. Because there's some people that I've talked to that said it started while they were pregnant and then just never went away. So they just had alopecia. So that's wild that yours started before you got pregnant. It kind of grew in a bit and then you had your baby and it was like, see you. Yeah. Hormones just went awry. And then I turned yeah. 40 and I wouldn't even tell you what the changes are now. It's like, I just don't. I've right. kind of gotten tired of chasing it. So it's, God, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm just like at a point where I'm like, there's so many wigs aren't what they used to be. What they used to be were not oh. great. They did not look good back then. My mom's grandmother, my great grandmother on her side, yeah. I remember now her wearing wigs. In retrospect, that's the side of the family it's on. And I remember being like, holy cow, like yeah. what a different because that's <laughs> right. the perception I had. Like if you were yeah. to go and get one, unless you're a movie star, or a, you know, Beyonce or something, that's they're gonna look to bad. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I thought too. I was like, oh man, those good wigs that all of those celebrities have are probably 
ten thousand dollars, which sure their right. wigs are very expensive, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I didn't know that you could get the quality you got. That's why I was so scared yeah. of wigs. I was like, no, oh, yeah. I can't, can't do it. I don't want to start it. It's just until recently that I've been like, okay, wearing wigs out like with the hairline and everything out in the world, that took me a really long time. It's still a bit hard because I'm always like, oh, do people yeah. never know this is a wig. Like, oh yeah, people never know this is a wig. And yeah, that's a, that's a hard one for me to, to get over, which takes us to our first question. Very hard. <laughs> what was or currently is the hardest hurdle for you to jump when it comes to your hair loss? I think the trickiest part for me is because I... I'm such an insanely excited. I, I have a hard time saying nice things about myself, but one thing I've, I'm consistently told by friends that they appreciate is that I'm just wildly accepting. I'll like, tell me all your things, come as you are. Yeah. Just, you know, that's just the nature of how I am. I have such a hard time. And I have friends of like 20 plus years that have no idea that I have a very close bond with having that conversation and, and I'm ready. Like I can go into this community. I can talk to you. I can talk to other women and I can, I have, it's almost like I have an alternate life where I'm existing within this community, yeah. which is great. But then I also have to exist in this real world where I have right. very limited people who understand or even know. I, I have one friend who knows he's yeah. my best friend since the second grade. And he's the hairstylist who told me not to color my hair <laughs> black. And I didn't listen. That's a good person to tell though. He's a good person to tell. And he's yeah. been great throughout it. But I told the first person who isn't him this last week, only just this last weekend. So I think yeah. socializing and figuring out how to navigate that as a formerly social person who's always been okay, but sure. Um, sure. presenting myself differently is, is very, is making me very self-conscious. So that's actually really interesting because I never looked at it as your perspective. I always thought that everybody with alopecia kind of like posted it on social media and we we're kind of like, okay, now everybody knows and I can just keep living my life. But you're almost doing it in a way of like when you're comfortable telling that person. And I like that though, because it kind of gives you the control of it being intimate with that certain person. You don't have to tell a group of people. I feel like <laughs> telling one person at a time and kind of just going with the flow that way is almost helpful to your journey because it's not so much all at once. You know what I mean? I think at this point, that's the best way. And I think as a, I like to call myself like a recovering extrovert, not that there's anything wrong with being extroverted. I'm just sure. kind of going in inward a lot more. And I, and, and that's just kind of the nature of maybe getting older and just the everything else. But I think I have this mindset of being more selective in who I let into my life, my personal business. And, you know, um, not everyone deserves to know or needs to know. Yeah. And I hope that comes off not like sounding like, oh, no, no that's reason. great. But, you know, having those honest friendships with but the one friend, and then if I go to a public situation where maybe I'm not as close to other people, even if I think they might be giving me a look of, oh, she looks different, I don't owe them the same. Yeah, I didn't owe that friend, but I felt sure. like that was a comfortable space, if that yep. makes sense. So, yeah. absolutely. Even in, I feel like even with you telling your first friend, hairstylist even with telling that person I feel like if that person goes places with you you're almost a little bit more comfortable because you're like oh they know so I don't really have to hide or be weird around him or her and be like oh I gotta hide this they know so you don't even have you just have like a like a buffer almost you know oh yeah and I love when I have so his name's Hans when I have Hans with me it's like and he's his whole family are like we have a community theater where we grew up they yeah. are the community theater. So it's nothing to have grown up going to his house. His dad's gardening in a wig, like <laughs> a theater wig with like a robe on. Yeah. His mom's doing like some fairy guard. Just like I showed up last weekend, totally different than I was there. And nobody cares. Added so an I, eye. Right. No, no. So oh, it, that's it, great. it's kind of a built in, just like this little utopian person in my life and the, his family is right. like that too so yeah if I can get like that on a grander scale it might be nice because it can get isolating but sure yeah one person at a time I think. hey whatever works with for you you know like yeah. I feel like man every person that I've talked to too everybody has a different stance on it I mean like I know mm -hmm. people that are brand new to having alopecia and are already within like the first week or so taking it public 
they're rocking yeah. without hair, without a wig. They're just like, no, I'm comfortable this way. So it's like literally different for everybody. So I think yeah. that's awesome that you have people that you can count on though. That's really cool. And I hope to get there. I, I mean, I'm sure you hear like, as you get a little older, everyone told me, oh, when you hit 40, you're just going to stop caring about what people think. Yeah. It didn't happen. I didn't wake up 40 and like, oh, I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, it, it is gradually becoming less and less, you know, I worry less about going out without you know, mascara or makeup, because that's another thing. My form of hair loss or alopecia, my eyelashes like to come out. My eyebrows are like, I have to put them on every day. So like, yeah, it it is something that's kind of catching up with me, but like, it's getting more comfortable and not caring. And I see myself getting to where those other people are. I'm like right there. It's just me too. It's just taking me a little bit more time. (laughs) Yeah. 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 This one thing. And that's the thing I'm pretty outgoing about, you know, I'll talk about mental health. I'll talk about my issues with eating disorder and, you know, body dysmorphia. This is such a sacred subject to me that it's, I think so painful. It's just hard, harder than anything else. So, I mean, you got a whole slew of people that feel the same way. I mean, I feel the same way too. For whatever reason, I have had my trials and tribulations through my life too, and tough moments and crazy things that have happened and all of that. I'm totally fine with talking about when it came to my hair loss, I was like, I don't know. I don't want to tell people this is so vulnerable. Like it's just, it's a piece of me that's so vulnerable. And I don't know if I'm ready to tell people. That's why it took me like close to like, I think it was like 10 years to really talk about it. So I get it. In regards to your journey too, I know that I obviously follow you and know what you're up to. You also live right next to me, but I know you've been talking about braving the shave too. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? I'm feeling great. I actually had an extensive conversation with my mother this last weekend and I've had it before. She's also hitting, she just hit 70. So she gives yeah. even less apps than I do. And, yeah. <laughs> and she, I see that like, that's where I'm going to get someday. And in the past, when I mentioned maybe thinking about it, she was like, oh, well, why would you want to do something like that? Like, oh no. And I said it to her and she was like, I think that's great. I would She's love like, to do it. It makes sense now that I'm 70. <laughs> Your dad said not to, he doesn't want me to, but I think you should. And so for me, it's like, I told her this, and maybe I can say this is my reasoning. It's like, I, you know, you get in the shower, you deal with the shutting. It's like reliving a trauma every day. It's seeing it kind of get a little bit better, get much, much worse. I'm in a lot of stress right now with work and going back to grad school. So it's kind of at a really bad point. Yeah. I just want to just not think about it. I don't want to see it. Why would I put myself through that every day? I'm not holding on to it. it. I can't wear it out like I used to. There's there are no fibers that can handle right. this situation. And I was thinking even something as big as like, I haven't jumped in a pool and put my head under in 25 years. Yeah, I get that. That's actually wild that you bring that up because I totally get it's that. Time. Especially yeah. like we live in Michigan. Lakes, I know. hello. Like my all good of friend invited lakes. me to swim today and I was like, soon. Yeah. But like not today. Like I'm not yeah. I can't just like I know. So there there are a lot of reasons that have pushed me here and I I've got the Amazon cart with the clippers ready and yep. I just have to <laughs> I'm like when I get paid on Friday, it's it's happening and then I just have to set myself, you know, but I'm not pushing myself, but it's it's this month. It's June. It's yeah. it's June. So that's yeah. great. I know yeah. I remember when I got there too. I, I got to the point in my hair loss where I had a huge patch right here. And I said, how am I going to cover that up? Because I used to use um, like root spray and extensions. Mm -hmm. And I used to move my extensions around to where like my hair loss was and everything. But then this huge one on my head came and I went, oh my God, what am I supposed to do with that? And I remember one time I went out with Damon and I remember there was a light right where we sat there was like this fluorescent light that was oh boy me. and I'm like I'm I'm having a panic attack yeah. I know that people that are walking up to us because he knew people there can yeah. see right through this root spray and my scraggly hair and I said that's it I remember being like I'm shaving soon and then it just happened at like yeah. two in the morning one time oh my gosh I didn't know that that's yeah yeah I get it. I think it's moments like that. Yeah. Just why would you want to go through a panic attack just to be, it it robs so much potential fun. And I mean, like I've said, I've got a closet now that I've acquired all of these, (laughs) I've saved up. I've got these wigs that I love. They're really pretty. I feel good in them. So why it doesn't make any sense at all to 
to hide not all of them, like, not show them off. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's just, I mean, I'm at a point too. It's like, even with my son being 14, it's so funny. At first he was kind of like, what are you doing? Like he would be like mortified if I picked him up for school. And I just started just showing up as is to pick him up from school. And gradually he doesn't even bat an eye. He does not yeah. say anything. And I, I talked to him about the shave idea. I'm like, you know, I just want to have a conversation with you. And and he was like, okay, whatever. I'm like, and I prefaced it because he's gone through different hair. He did like the reverse mullet. He did yeah. a fade. He's done every style that he wants to do. And I'm like, you can express yourself however that feels good to you. And I said, well, and I kind of turned it around. I said, well, why would it be any different for me? Why would I not be allowed to do that? Absolutely. Um, and then he understood. I'm putting it on a level of that's where being a teenager does come into play because they are so big on self-expression. Yes, very much so. He genuinely understood. He's like, okay, well, that makes sense. I like to dress this way. You like to dress that way. I think I'm right there. And, yeah. you know, if my son can accept it and, you know, my family knows and we're, we're good, then, you you're know. hitting You're hitting like all the steps you need right mm-hmm. before you get there. Because I, I did the same thing that you're doing with your hair too. I started yeah. chopping it. Like I remember yes. I just started to <laughs> cut it off. And I was like, all right, I'm going to rock like this short and put it in a little pony and wear hats on this short hair. And then I remember the last time that I was thinking about cutting it, I was like, man, if I go any shorter, it wouldn't make sense for me to go like here. So I'm like, you know what? I think I might shave it. Didn't. And then like, I think like a week later, I was like, (laughs) like, it's gone. It's out of here. I know I haven't spoken to you. I spoke to you a little bit. I know you've posted about it. So I've seen you. It's been a very, it was kind of like a breath of, you know, fresh air relief. And I've heard the same thing from women that I'm close with within the community. So I, I suspect that, you know, there will be that moment of, I'm sure shock, you get up to go to the bathroom, like you might look at the mirror. Oh, shock. Yes. (laughs) Shock is big. Yes. Yeah. I think the relief will be I'm not attached to it. I haven't been attached. I'm like you. I've been cutting it shorter and shorter. I'm not attached to it anymore. It just feels like hours of my life that just I can get back and just yeah. time, you know. So it, yeah, it's time. It's time. I'm- yeah, <laughs> I get it. I mean, I remember being right there where I was like, man, I just it's an annoyance. Like it got it annoying where it became like I'm just holding on to this, not because I want to, but because like I'm so used to it. So I think like the shock of seeing yourself like that. Cause I never in my whole entire life, I mean, for 21 years saw myself with hair. So Mm -hmm. seeing myself without it and looking at myself in the mirror and being like, Oh my God, like, that's what I was holding on to. That's it. Like I didn't, I thought it was going to be this big thing. Of course I was crying throughout it. Next day I sat there and I'm like, that's it. I'm okay. I'm totally fine. And that's what I didn't expect was to be fine after it you know what I mean so yeah that's that's when you know you did the right thing yeah you know you did the right thing if that's I mean for you at that moment if if you felt that instant sort of like the next day like okay I'm at peace with this you know absolutely yep all right I'm gonna throw a couple more questions at you okay (laughs) I swear we I could talk forever and forget about the questions because it's okay no that's that's it's hair loss it's a topic we're very well (laughs) there's a lot to say Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah right All right. So the next question is, do you have any moments? I know you're like new to telling people, so this might not be a thing, but if you do, do you have any moments throughout your hair loss journey that makes you laugh now, knowing that things are getting easier or any embarrassing moments that have happened that you laugh about now? Right when, you know, we learned we're in a pandemic, everything's going to lockdown. People were panicking, obviously toilet paper, sanitizer. I get on Amazon and I spent almost $200 ordering fibers and dry shampoo because I was like, I'm never going to get this again. I can't continue. What am I going to do when I can't access this in a store or it's gone? And like, yeah, right. So I spent an insane amount of money. That to me is, I can laugh now, but I was thinking, what am I going to do? There will be no longer like, and I would think about that in this ridiculous part of my brain, sometimes in an apocalyptic situation. <laughs> what am I what supposed am I to do? To, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like people in movies that are on desert islands or like they, they get, or like I'm watching yellow jackets right now. I'm like, if that were me, I'd be humiliated because I would have been like, what would I have done? <laughs> I need these yep. fibers. So I think the fact that my brain instant, instantly goes to that, went to that catastrophic thing. It's like fight or life. flight mode. Yeah. It's like, oh my God, I need to buy everything under the sun. I do the same thing. Cause yeah. I'm like in an apocalyptic world, I can't carry around my wigs everywhere. Right. But also right. I'm not going to have like clippers or anything. So what am yeah. I supposed to do? <laughs> I know. 
So that was a moment I can look back now and be like, okay, Jessica, you really freaked out. Some people are yeah, stocking right. your toilet paper. You're getting <laughs> hair fibers off Amazon. And so I can laugh about it now. I think when it comes to like embarrassing moments, I haven't been very vulnerable with people. I have those near like moments where I'm like, I was in a relationship for six years. I've been out for five. I don't have a lot of time or need for one, but sure. <laughs> I think like there's moments also where you have those i almost got found out like I like running and getting yourself situated, checking in the bathroom, like, yep. running to make sure like a gust of wind. I've had a lot of those. And that's another reason why I'm exhausted. It's just like, come on, like I, I know nothing catastrophic, but th- I can say that spending that insane amount of money on things, I think I probably still have some because I don't really since I started wearing wigs, I don't really use the fiber. So I'm pretty sure I still have a few jars of that yep those brands i'm like i don't even know whatever's cheapest i'm probably putting right. like chemical dust <laughs> crazy on, like, things in your hair right exactly on your head it didn't matter to me in the way if it would have saved it the day or done anything i would have i don't care what the, the risks were at that point so yeah. you know, i know i was I the same way i oh man i think about that root spray all the time though it like stained my head if you touched it it would get black because i had like pretty dark hair it would get yeah. black all over your skin and I'm like, I can't hug people. I can't no. be like, get close to people because this is going to rub on everything and everyone's going to be really confused. <laughs> right, no, and I've had a few of those months where I'm like, eh. I'm like, oh, it's just some powder eye makeup that I dropped uh, or it might've been on yep. my face. I might've rolled over <laughs> on the pillow or something. Yeah, that kind of worry is just too time consuming. So. It really is. That's why it's so it's so refreshing when you do get to the point where you shave your head, all of that's going to go away because I you're not going to- you're not going to think about it anymore. There's no point to, which is so wild because I mean, like very rarely do I look at the progress of my hair loss now. I mean, like I have Mm -hmm. a shaved head all the time. I don't, sometimes I grow it in, but then I'm like, no, this is annoying. It looks terrible through my wigs. Like it's just poking through because it's when your hair grows back, when you have a shaved head, it's pokey. So sometimes it pokes through and you have to shave it again. But man, when you shave your head, all of that goes away because it's like, there's no point. Yeah. There's no point to think about it anymore. Yeah. All right. On to the next question. Have you faced any challenges in your professional or personal life when it comes to your hair loss? I'd say professionally, because I'm a social worker, I do a lot of things telephonically, but when I work with clientele, a lot of the people I work with, it might be in situations where there might be some, if you're serving anyone in mental health, I work with a lot of aging adults now, especially now, I guess that I work with aging adults. If I were to show up to see someone who's seen me one way, and then I show up differently and they're 86 years old, there lacks the filter, which is a beautiful thing. My mom's 70. She has zero filter. I've said (laughs) it. it. I think it goes away even more so, but I have this fear. So I always try to stay very consistent. Like by that, I mean, I don't really wear any of my wigs or anything. If I do a home visit or things like that, because I'm afraid of just looking different. Yeah. hearing it. We have sporadic office meetings. I usually would wear like a little clip on, like the little topper clip yeah. on and, and like a bun. And that's what they've seen me in. So how do I approach when that's not the option anymore? Seeing clients, seeing, you know, seeing my colleagues and stuff. So right. that's what I haven't really addressed yet, but I think I might just approach it differently within friends and just show up and like, yeah. full force to a meeting one day and just see what happens. Yeah. Because you almost think of it as in like, if you, cause I wore hats for the longest time, my job that's now work from home. When we were in the office, it was very lax. Like we could wear jeans and a hoodie, like, cause we never had anybody come in. We were just strictly like online, social media, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I could wear beanies. I could wear hats. I could cover my hair. So there were times when we were working from home where I would just wear my wig because I'm like, I'm on the camera. Nobody's going to really see or notice or anything. Yeah. And like, you could tell people kind of like, <laughs> who is that? <laughs> that was under your beanie the whole time? Or right. <laughs> right. And then I, I would panic and then I would take meetings like this because it would cut off my head and I'm like, yeah. people can't see it then. But that was hard for me because it was like, they, people were so used to seeing me with a hat every single day without fail. I was wearing a hat with an outfit and they got yeah, used to yeah. that. So when they didn't see a hat in my head, it was like, whoa, who is this person? So I totally like <sighs> that. I've heard someone else in the community say like, she used to do like a bun, like into submission, like with the fibers. And one day she showed up with a wig and they were like, you were hiding all like, do you really think I'd be hiding this right. beautiful? Like, no. So, I mean, I, again, I'm mostly remote. 
there yeah. will be few situations, but I'm also in grad school now. And I know that professionally going forward, I'm totally switching career objectives. So there are going to be some instances that I'm going to be needing to get more confident and, and I'm going into public health. So, you know, yes, yeah. I don't know. I think I once think again, that, I know I keep saying this, but when you shave your head, I swear all of that will go away. <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> that's what's I, so wild about it is it's like, I think it's not the wigs. I think it's actually the hair under the wigs. Yes. It's, that is what, what we're scared about is the hair yeah. under our wigs. And once you realize that like, there's so many people in so many different professions that wear wigs, yeah. honestly, now that I know about wigs, I'm like watching TV, like that's a wig, that's a wig. This mm -hmm. person's wearing a wig. Like I'm out in public, like these people are wearing wigs. What's going on? <laughs> oh yeah. I not know that. I know. I had no idea I was living in this like little bubble and yep. thought that I was completely on an island by myself. So yeah, um, whether it's all on of TV. Us did. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I remember going to my first in person. This was wild that I did this. When I first got hair loss, I went to a NAF in person like support group. And yeah. I remember being absolutely terrified. One, because there was an older lady there. I think she was like 50 or 60. And she asked to see my hair loss. And I was oh. full on panicked. I remember yeah. I got red. I started sweating. I'm like, I'm supposed to take my hat off in front of all these people. Like what? I couldn't believe it. But then I realized like, oh, all these people have hair loss. So they get it. But that still yeah. scared me. So yeah. um, never went back. <laughs> Cause I was well, like, I can't do this ever again. That's really hard. Especially that first, like that first question being like, show right. me, show me. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, that's she might've been somewhere else in the journey, but you're like, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. right in that moment, I was like, no, I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> um, but my whole point of that is I remember there was a guy there and he was like, I think he was like 75, 80 and he would, he had universalis. So all of his hair was gone. And I remember him saying that when he first got it, there was no one around. You couldn't contact anybody. There weren't support groups. There weren't, the wigs back then were terrible. He said, yeah. you couldn't look on the internet. Obviously that wasn't a thing. So you kind of just were on an island for so yeah. long. And then he realized when he got to his age, like 75 or in his like seventies, he finally found people that were like him. And I, I couldn't believe it. I'm glad you said that because I think sometimes like, oh, my late thirties, what did I do all those years? I would felt like, that man, when people went that life. long, yeah. I needed to hear that this week. I was being very hard on myself about my age and like how long I let myself live yep. the way that I did. So that actually, I do that too impactful to hear so yeah like yeah. I, I always think about like all of my 20s I I didn't do anything yeah. I didn't go anywhere I I know I stayed home because I couldn't I literally yeah. couldn't and then I always think back to him and other people that have reached out and told me that they just found out about the hair loss community at 60 at like and I'm sitting there like, oh my God, they went 60 years without knowing that there was a community. So I think uh, of that and I'm like, okay, you know, like at least I, I found it at the age that I did, but yeah, isn't that wild? And I think that's another reason just, I just want to shave, just like get, just shave it off, just move forward, just be happy. Yeah. It really sucks the life out of it. I mean, at least for, it's like constant worry. I feel like it's just taken away so much. It's just, I don't know. And, and other ways I've liberated myself in my life, I'm in honor of those people, honestly, like if I have to, you know, sort of reframe it like that for me, that's the social worker, like, yeah, exactly. In honor <laughs> of those who have, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. That's really, I can't imagine going that long in life. I know. I'm glad that, you know, we have the community that we have now and the awareness, at least it's getting there. I feel. Yeah. It's, I feel like it improves like every month. I swear. If I take like yeah. a social media break and then go back on, I see, I'm like, whoa. Like there's so yeah. many new people. There's so many people that have embraced it so much faster than I did. And that's like the mm -hmm. whole goal is like people who yeah. get hair loss, find the community, then they don't have to have 10 years, 20 years, yes. 60 years worrying about it. Yeah, so, that's yeah. the goal. If it can, if it can draw people in sooner to have the conversation and make these connections. And I think I would love for people to not have to go through that much yep. time, yeah. you know, that they can't get back. So yeah. Obviously we touched on one of the best resources. Um, <laughs> I mean, we touched on that yeah. whole episode. Um, do you have any other like people that have helped you along the way in your journey before you found the community? I mean, to be honest with you, before the community, I didn't have anybody, just my friend, like I had that one friend 
Yeah. And it felt really good to have that one friend. I'm very, very lucky um, to have him. There have been some very great, you know, yourself included in the community, just these great, I have conversations that start about this and then they've turned into other, other areas, but I, I've stuff, learned, yeah. yeah, and I've learned tips and tricks. And if I'm going to put the amount of money, you know, it costs to buy a wig, you want to talk to some people source it out, ask questions, yeah. like read reviews, like see what somebody does with theirs and get some good insights. So I've got a nice pocket of, I've got a big community, but then a pocket of people who are like, yeah, you know, exa- we're same page. Like, yep, absolutely. So they've been great mentors to me. <laughs> yeah. Because then if you know that community, that you know where to go and you have the support that I feel is adequate. And then, you know, I have my, I go to therapy. I do weekly. That's another not within the community, but I've been open with my therapist who has like the most beautiful, long, of course, brown, thick, gorgeous <laughs> hair. She is helpful. So I'd recommend, I mean, having the community is great, but then I also think if it goes beyond into outside where sources you're, too, yeah, yeah, like therapy, whatever, it, whatever you might need. And that's been really helpful for me as well. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. I feel like therapist would be a great idea because it's like this person isn't connected to my life they won't tell anybody my business like it's a first step that could be very helpful what is one piece of advice that you would want to give to someone new to hair loss or possibly regressing right now with the hair loss oh man I had a big regression recently with like I was on top for a minute and then I kind of slid back I think something that somebody told me that I and I spoke with the other day I don't want to oversimplify this. I feel like when I say these things, it's like, oh, well, yeah, you say it, but how do we put it into practice? But right. people really have their own stuff going on. They're focused on themselves, like the vast majority of people. So those moments when you're freaking out, I just try to remember that person you're in public with, the person you're like the friend. I went to a friend gathering last weekend. Yeah, I might be self-conscious about the fact that I'm looking a little differently in a wig, but someone might be self-conscious because maybe they put on five pounds, maybe right. like their outfit that day. People are not looking at you as critically as you are. You're your own yeah. truly like worst critic. And that's what's crazy to think about too, is like when you go to things like that, most people are in their own minds. Yes. Like everybody is thinking that this person is thinking this, but then they're probably thinking, oh no, I'm worried about myself. I'm thinking this, but they're not even focusing on you probably. No, They're focusing on their own inner thoughts and their own stuff. I say this and I put it into practice with like social gatherings, but I'm taking my son to Florida this year. For some reason, I'm so terrified of thinking ahead of going this year because if I do the shave, I'm going to show up. And mind you, my brother has a shaved head. He jokes about how he used to have hair and like, you know, he (laughs) he was born with like, (laughs) he shaves it. And gets and lives his life. But I think I always over and like, do I have to have a conversation with somebody before I go and visit them? Do I owe them that conversation or should I just, can I just show up? Right. Show up. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So I think that's what I still battle with for a while. Like I've got some time to think about it, but those are the things I think I had with my family because I'm, we're so spread out in my family that, okay, have the conversation first. Yeah. Or do you just wow them? Like just Do you walk just out? pretend like it didn't happen? Like you just show yeah. up? Yeah. I know. I, I yeah. do the same stuff. Yep. Yeah. So that, that'll be my next hurdle in uh, self-actualization when it comes to this, but we'll, I'll be able to jump off the boat and swim with the dolphins. With exactly. The so that's right. all that matters to me. Exactly. See, that's the thing too, is like, if I could talk to anybody that's new to it, that all of the second guessing, all of the worry, when you get there or when you get to the family party or the friends or everything, and then you're done with it and you go home, then you kind of realize like, oh, that wasn't that big of a deal. Like I'm fine. I came out unscathed. I'm still who I am. Like I still accept myself. So I feel like that hurdle of getting over that is so hard in the moment. But then when you reflect on it, you're like, Oh, oh, it wasn't that big of a deal. So why did I get psych myself out? I know. I know. I try to think of it in terms of like, I try to tell myself like high school things that we think are like major, really, I don't, you know, I'm 21 years later, 23, God, how many years it is? I don't know, but <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. And like right. even last weekend for Memorial Day, going to a couple of gatherings with friends, I, I see maybe every two, three years, I was nauseous the whole way there. And I sat to the side and then now I got home and I was like, well, whoop de doo Like nobody, right. nobody cared. We all, everybody goes food. back to their lives. Yeah, exactly. I know I do yeah. the same stuff. Yep. Yeah. 
So hopefully that'll just get easier as time goes on. And absolutely. I'm excited for you because I know what comes after shaving your head. Like I know the worries that you have right now. I know, oh my God, if I shave it and what if I don't like it, I can't go back. I know all the worries that you're (laughs) feeling right now. And I also know how you're going to feel after. It's all of those worries of showing up to family parties or people, you know, or whatever, even like wearing wigs, it's easier. Like you're going to like it better because yeah. it looks better and it fits on your head better you're also gonna love throwing on a head wrap like I do that every morning yes. I wake up and I throw on a head wrap not worrying about your hair like not having to yes. brush it or wash it or whatever yes. it is all of that just goes away and Thank I'm you. so excited to see you go through them and talk about am- oh my god Like, I can't believe that this is what it feels like. You've all told me this, but like, I actually feel it. And you're just going to beam. And I know, I know you are. I'm I'm so excited for you. Uh, Do it on on your own time though. Don't let anybody pressure you. Well, listen, I would have done it last summer. When I turned 40, I thought, okay, you're 40. This is when you do all of it. But instead I did boudoir photos. So this, I was like, you can only do (laughs) one risky thing per year. At a time. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> this year, you, the 41 is when you shave. You can only step was, once out of your comfort zone and that's yes, it. Yes, <laughs> that was enough for that year. I needed to like scale it back. So I'm I'm more than ready. I'm like, I feel like I'm in the edge of that pool, like a kid without the water wings, like jumping in oh, yeah. and stuff. So yeah. I'm ready. So that's I appreciate awesome. the the support and yeah. boost there. I know. I'm yeah. so excited to hear about it when you do. Yeah. Like, I, I, oh, can't, yeah. I can't wait to hear about it. But Oh, you know you will. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so excited. I mean, like, this is coming out. I think this is coming out in July. So to be determined on when Jess does it, but go follow yeah, her if you want to follow like, her around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, follow I, her journey of her brave and shave. But um, I'll be swimming in Lake Michigan by then. Yeah, Michigan exactly. Has, <laughs> we'll see all the pictures of you just <laughs> sprawled out. <laughs> I'll be in like a float tank enjoying life aquatically. From, yeah. Everything will involve water and I'm a Leo, but everything yeah. will be aquatic. You know? <laughs> yep. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm so, I'm so excited for you about that. Oh, thank I you. like cannot wait to hear all about it. I just wanted to say thank you for coming on. This has been a great yeah. conversation. Yes. Thank you for having me. This is very, very fluid. And I'm just, I feel like, yeah. Yeah. And, and funny thing is real quick, I, yeah. before I had my son and before I became a social worker, I was set to go to school to go into broadcasting because I wanted to be in radio. Oh, no kidding. And I'm, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, Jessica, that's not, <laughs> That's not happening. So this is like kind of checking something off mentally for me. Like, okay. Yeah. And this this is a step too. Like in your journey, like you're telling more people, even though most of them are alopecians that listen, but still you're telling more people and it kind of just pushes you along. I think that's why it's so cool to have people on and just to tell their story. Cause it's like, it can help you along the way in your journey. Absolutely. Even if like when you tell people, you could be like, Hey, go listen to this episode. You can hear all about my hair loss journey. So Mm -hmm. that's a thing too. If you don't want to keep reiterating it, (laughs) you can just be like, I know here's this episode. Here's, here's my life. Refer to this link. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about actually. (laughs) Yeah. I know. I always think about that too, where I'm like, well, if I ever have to tell anybody, they'll probably just see on my social media, those ball chicks and figure it out. (laughs) But thank you so much for being on this. This has been an awesome awesome conversation all of the links to jess and finding her and her um two different accounts (laughs) yeah (laughs) her hair loss and her normal one will be in the description but if you want to get a hold of me you can email me at those ball chicks or send a message on instagram or facebook all of the links to everything you need is in the direct me which you will be able to find in the episode description until next time guys bald pack out